Hey, so we're at the final stage with our tracker workflow. We've done the mix, we've got everything sounding pretty much what we want. And now we're just doing the final strokes on getting the levels just right and just making sure the dynamic range is where we want. So we're going to look at a few of the nice little tracker features on here about the master levels, uh, using the limiter, using EQ and some of the other features on the device to get our track just right look at how we can export it out so we get different audio files and then a bit about my pipeline on the computer so how I personally go through editing the sound in a bunch of different ways and some tools that you might find useful as well so let's get straight into it <laughs> All right, we're back with the Polyan Tracker and we're gonna look at the mastering section. Now, I've captured a snippet off the radio just for demonstration. We don't need to know what song it is. We're just looking at the waveform itself. And when we come to mastering, I would say have a look at the mixing video I've done for the Polyan Tracker if you haven't done so already, because mastering is sort of like that last couple of strokes to get your mix sounding really nice. And having everything sorted in the mixing section is going to be much more better than trying to fix things in the master. It's just going to be a lot of hassle. So what I've done, capture off the radio, we're going to use it to demonstrate what we're looking for, for loudness. Now you probably heard that term thrown around quite a lot and what is loudness and how we handle it. And as you can see, we've got peaks and troughs on this audio. And when we say uh, level peak, that's probably the highest point that we have here. So as you can see, we've got the bar and then we have these peaks here that are just about touching. Now, I've normalized this to just under because you don't wanna push the audio past that point because then that will start getting clipping and get all sorts of issues. But the other part we gotta manage is we've got these average points here. So these are more like the average volume of our song, which is probably these low points here. So we have a bit of range and that range is how quiet some of our sounds are to how loud our sounds are. And for me personally, I like a bit of dynamic range. Now for the poly and tracker, we can control the levels by going into the mastering section here. And if you go to the global mixer and we hit play, we can see what's going on. Now we don't have values here to say like one dB or that, but we can get pretty good results with what we've got. Cause if we've done the mix right, what we're really doing is just making sure that it's not clipping and at a certain point. So what I like to do is just having the line just a bit under that. So if I play, you can see where it's hitting, but we also probably want to pick a really loud part of our song as well. So if we pick, it's not really loud. There we go, that's the loud part. So if I play that. I know that if it goes right up the top, it's hitting red. So I just try and be a little bit less than that. But I feel that's quite good. And then what you try and do is look at the lower point as well. So I know that my dynamic range is about here. And for the purposes of the poly and tracker, like if I play live, I've got other things to control loudness. But what happens if we don't like how much that's jumping around? Like it could be like a range like that and you wanna bring it closer together. That's where in the mixing video, I was talking about leaving the limiter because the limiter is a really good tool for like bringing the levels down. So we can create a bit of a threshold to start knocking our sound down. So the higher peaks will be pushed down towards the average. If I start playing with the level limiter threshold, you'll see this bar here start to come down. And you can hear how that's affecting the audio, but that's where these two come in. So as the envelope on the poly end tracker, we do have the attack. So how much it's gonna cut into the sound and then how much it's gonna release. So if we give this a short attack and a longer release, you'll hear a difference in that. So it sounds a bit different to having a longer attack and a quick release. So if I was gonna make, say, a soft limiter, I would try and have it so it comes out and in really slowly, just so it's not like uh, if we're punching up and it almost is clipping. This is more for like smoothing out the top. So 
So at some point, say where I hear it dip quite a bit and it sounds a bit wonky, so I might give it a little bit more attack and play it again. <laughs> sounds better to my ear and really this is just experimenting but this is more of a way to try and smooth out the um, dynamic range and then we can push it a little bit higher so that would be really good for what I've got here um, the other type of limiter I wanted to show you is called a hard limiter and this will just like if we're getting really close to hitting the uh, noise like the cap and going through to clipping, that's going to cause us a lot of issues. So I'm going to move the threshold right up, and then I'm just going to make the attack and release really hard. So it's going like anything that clips, it'll just immediately push it down so it's not going to clip the audio. And if I start playing... As you heard, pushing it a bit aggressively there, like you can hear the effect that's doing, it's just pushing the sound down. Usually you use this one very sparingly because it will make the audio as you heard just go and yeah. So I just thought I'd show a couple of different ways we could use the limiter for that. As well, if we go back, we do have access to the EQ. So we can do a bit of EQing before the mix. So if we're not happy with certain areas with the bass or the mids, we can control the entire part for the song instead of us controlling the EQ as we did in the mixing video per instrument and per track. So this is sort of like the last sort of flavor. So you don't want to touch this as you're going through the song. You sort of want to touch this at the end because Say I want to take the mids down and then add a bit more of the highs. You can sort of change the flavor of what the song is. So usually I just leave that for like the last section. If I feel something isn't sounding just right, I'll come in here and start tweaking. As well as we have bass boost, which very uh, 90s. We can increase the low end and give it a little bit more punch as well as space. And what this does is it grabs the, say we've got all our sounds in the center, it'll start bringing it out like that. So if we get low, in here it's loud. It also gets loud, so don't just be careful with this one. But you can hear how it's pulling the sound in and out to each microphone, uh, sorry, each side of the stereo space. And yeah. Uh, we do have those, but we sort of covered them with the previous videos, so you can change up the reverb and delay. But really, this is a good spot to be in. We've got everything mixed. We've got the levels really nice. Uh, we can do a little bit more tweaking here, but I'm quite happy right now. I want to export this. Now, there's a few ways we can get the sound off the device, like right now at the moment. I'm just recording the output to a field recorder, which I can use to plug into my computer and get the sound that way. But we do have a few export options. So we can come into here and then if we go to export, so config export. So with the export options, we can just export the song in its entirety. We can export the stems. So how we have all our tracks, it'll export them out as individual um, stereo tracks. We have export pattern, so all the blocks that we made, it will export them out individually. Or a combination of the both, it will export every stem and every pattern. So you'll get a bunch of files for that. And you can also export this as an IT file, which is a type of mod or tracker file that you can load up into other tracker software. So for the purposes of this video, because I want to take this and put on Spotify and that, I'm going to export stems because that will also export the master sound as well. So if I hit that button, it will sit there and do its thing. It does take a bit, but go get a coffee and come back. All right, I've got my SD card now. We could have taken the SD from the uh, field recorder, but I've just exported the samples and I'm going to put it onto my computer. So let's have a look at some of the things we can do with the PC. All right, files loaded up and I'm just going to jump into export, go to my song, and you'll probably see two files. Now selection, as we were making our own sounds, like in the percussive videos, we had those um, blended sounds as well as the chords and some of the cool uh, wave sequencing stuff we did. 
that's where all these files end up so just keep that in mind but if we go up to here mind the uh, dot wave tracks because I'm doing some Reaper stuff at the moment but we have all our tracks sitting here and we have the master file which we can just play straight as it is so we can hear what's going on. but we're going to start looking at because there's a bit of stuff here now you can pull this into your favorite door and I'm not going to be very door specific with this video but what I will do is just show a bit of my pipeline, which I use a piece of software called Ozone. I'll just show you some of the like big picture things I try and do. So it's explored the entire song as well as our working file information here. So what I like to do is just make sure it's all clipped to that point and I'll just listen to that. Oh. Yeah, that seems close enough. And I think our intro do a bit of a, like a fade in or not, but that's your decision. So I've just got the song data here. Now Ozone does some nice stuff for us. So if I go up here for streaming and next. So we let it run its course. And what it does is it tries and mixes to like current standards. And sometimes I like what it's done. Sometimes I don't like. I can see here it's raised the bass and lowered the highs. So it's giving a bit of different EQ. Uh, it scooped out a few parts that it thinks it's annoying. It's done some thresholding to help me out. One thing I do like to add at the end is I want to see what the stereo image looks like. This could be a bit of a cop out in some people's eyes, but I really enjoy using this tool for like the type of music like Weekly Beats, which is a weekly song every week. Um, I'll use something like this to work with the song. But if I'm doing something that's a little bit more in depth and I want to go right into the nitty gritty of the sound design, I can actually bring in all the tracks from the poly and tracker, have them lined up and then go through each individual thing and start adding to the sound. So really this is about where your door is or what you have access to. Now I don't know what sort of tools you have access to, like you could do this with completely free software like Audacity to like do those chops and changes or add some EQ, it's really what your workflow is. But I found one really cool tool which was pointed out to me which is really handy if you're uploading it online which is this uh, loudness analyzer here. I'll leave a link in the description but all you really need to do is drag your master file on and it'll do its thing. So here we go, we've got audio set up right now and yeah, it thinks that this is how the different platforms are going to adjust our audio because all these platforms want to keep a consistent loudness across all their videos. So they use algorithms to increase or decrease the loudness of our song, which is using a system called LUFS or loudness units to full scale. So how we were talking about the peaks and the average, it's sort of using that to calculate how the actual loudness of the song specific platforms you can start tweaking the sound by dropping it by three decibels or start adding limiters and that and make a informed decision by this and everyone can have access to that so i wanted to finish off this video talking because mastering is one thing but actually listening to your device like i've got a whole bunch of these different types of speakers some some that are made some that are probably a little bit old and probably needs to be thrown out but they have their own sound profiles like these are designed to be a flat response across the entire spectrum they give me good information about what's going on but most people are listening with their phones so you want to try and make sure that sort of sound is carried across and if you're playing on all these different devices then you're sort of getting an idea of what different people are going to hear like you might not hear all those nice little ear candy parts in the background, but certain things are carrying forward. And listening to a whole bunch of different devices, you're starting to pick up on certain elements that you're like, oh, I like this element, but I don't like that element. You go back into the master stage and you do some tweaks, put them through the devices again, listen, and you start refining down to something that you like across a whole bunch of different devices. And yeah, it leads to a much nicer mix in the end. And really, I find that is more important than the software that you use or what you're um, tweaking online. So definitely have a go at doing that. And yeah, that that's it. That's the full mastering pipeline. That's me from no idea on the poly and tracker to having a finished song ready to go. All right, so we've gone from zero to hero. We've got a master track, but what about playing that track live? And in the next video, we're going to look at how we can use the Polyan Tracker to 
do some live performance elements because we do have that perform button sitting there but I didn't touch it during the series. I think we might need to put a nice little video together just about that button because there is a lot of fun to be had with that section. So I hope you stick around for that one. And if you found any of the information with mastering your song useful in this video, definitely give it the thumbs up because it tells the algorithm to point this video to other people. And really, if this was the first video that you've come across with my Poly and Tracker tip series, I've done a, about 10 videos now for all the little tips and tricks with like tracker workflow on the Poly and Tracker. So definitely have a look at those as well. And download the Poly and Tracker tips uh, sample pack, which you can get free pretty much. Just follow the link below. And yeah, this has been a wonderful little project to get underway. I've noticed that it's helped a lot of people out. So I'm very thankful to everyone that's followed along with this series. And yeah, other than that, I will get stuck into this performance mode video and I hope to see you around for that one.